In this short video I'm gonna show you how to use the packet capture feature of the Palo Alto file in order to analyze the traffic going through the device. So now let's take a look how the packet capture works at the firewall. I'm gonna show you the interfaces from the firewall first so you can understand my topology quickly. I have this Ethernet 1.2, which is my inside interface. And in this zone, I have a Linux server with the IP address 10.0.1.11. And it's going through the firewall so we can reach the internet. So we're gonna make a couple tests. I'm gonna make a test with a TCP protocol, which is HTTPS, with an UDP protocol, which is DNS, and with ping. So we're gonna capture these three traffic types, and you're gonna analyze it using Wireshark. So the first thing we need to do is to come to Monitor. And under Monitor, you have Packet Capture. So the packet capture looks like this. On top, you have the Configure Filtering. Under Manage Filter, you configure your filter. So it means you're gonna enter which networks or which IP addresses you want to filter for your packet capturing. You have under the configure capturing, so you can configure which kind of traffic you want to capture. I'm gonna show you an example. If you click on add, the file has four, what it's called stages. So it has drop, file, receive and transmit. The drop stage is where the file puts all the dropped packets. The file stage is where the file puts all the packets that go through the file. The receive is what the file receives and the transmit is what the file transmits. You have to enter a file name, packet count and byte if you want, but I already configured all the four stages, which is probably what you're gonna be doing whenever you use the packet capture. Another settings, you can clear all the settings that you did above. And on the right side, the captured files, it's empty now, but whenever we capture some traffic, you're gonna see some files here being created. For example, if the file doesn't drop any packets, you won't be seeing any drop dot pcap on the right side because the file is not going to be creating any packets for drop if it's not dropping any packets let's go configure our filtering now if you click on manage filters you're going to see that i already configured something this is the ip address from my linux client and this on the right side is the ip address from netsums.com and here is from google I'm gonna generate traffic, like I said, in three using three different protocols. One, I'm gonna send a ping to netsums.com. So it's gonna match this first one. I'm gonna send a wget from my Linux client. Just downloads the main page from the website from netsums.com. So it's gonna match also my first filter. And then I'm gonna send a DNS request to the Google DNS 8888. So it's gonna match the second filter. The packet capture is stateful. It means that you don't need to configure the IP addresses from the response. If you see that some packages are missing or you cannot see the whole traffic from beginning to the end, maybe you need to play around here. But in my case, we're gonna just use this configuration that should be enough. My recommendation for you would be to start like this. And if you see, okay, after you analyze in, in Wireshark, it's, there are some packets missing, for example, you can play around with this capture filter. Just gonna press okay. But one thing to remember is that this is stateful. So in order to turn on the filter, you have to click here on this off. It goes on like this, but I'm gonna leave on purpose on off so I can show you something. If you come here and you try to turn on the packet capture without turning on the filter, you're gonna see a message. Packet capture is for troubleshooting only. This feature can cause the system performance to degrade. It consumes a lot of CPU from the file, the packet capture, depending on your filter. That's why here the file shows in bold that packet capture without a filter will cause all traffic to be captured. This can cause the system performance to degrade drastically. Do you want to continue? Usually you'd press cancel unless you're in your lab environment. I'm gonna press cancel because I want to use my filter. I'm gonna turn it on and then I'm gonna turn my packet capture. You also receive a warning, but at least the, the bold stuff is not there anymore. So in this case, I'm gonna press okay. One more thing guys, don't forget to turn off your packet capture if you're doing this in production, after you're done capturing the packets. This is very important. If I refresh here, I shouldn't see anything on the right side. And now I'm gonna go to my Linux. So now I'm at my Linux machine and here I'm gonna enter three commands. First of one is going to be ping netsums.com. There are two pings. The other one is going to be dig 8888. 
and I'm going to ask for netsums.com. It's going to come back with the IP address from netsums.com. And the third one is going to be wget https. So it's downloaded the index HTML from netsums.com. Now let's go back to the file. So now at the file, if I refresh my page, you can see here on the right side three files. You can see that the drop.pcap has not been created. I'm going to open this on Wireshark. This is what my file looks like. You can see here on top the two pings that I sent before. This is the IP address from my Linux client. And this is the IP address from netsums.com. And here's the answer. The second ping. The DNS query to 8888, and here's the answer. And here is the query using HTTPS. This is the port 443 to netsums.com. Of course, this part, you see a lot more packets because it's an HTTP request. And of course, you have a lot more traffic being generated. So as you can see, the rx.pcap has all the information that you need. But there's an unless, unless you're using NAT for this communication at your firewall. If you're using NAT, it's a little bit more complicated, but I'm going to show you how you can do. So now I'm going to activate NAT on my firewall, and then we can try the same again. So now I'm back at my firewall, and if we go to policies, I already did NAT. You can see that there's a NAT rule configured now. It's in yellow because I configured my firewall using Panorama, so but you don't need to worry about it. Panorama is the management appliance from Palo Alto. But the important thing is to take a look here. The source address is going to be 10.0.1.11. This is my Linux client. If there is a match to the destination address, which is 8.8.8.8 or netsums.com, the file is going to make a source NAT. It means that it's going to take this address here and substitute with this one here that we can see whenever it goes to the internet. So this is active now. So now we need to activate our packet capture again. So monitor, packet capture is already there. And we're going to delete these files. Delete. I'm going to start fresh. Now, since we are doing that, I would suggest you to do something else on policies, on the net configuration. I can see I'm going to copy this net IP address if I can. Yeah, I can here. And then now under monitor packet capture, I want to manage my filter and I want to insert a new filter. And I'm going to say the source. I want the source also to be from my net IP address. You can repeat the destination if you want. I'm just going to leave like this and then I'm going to, ah, non IP exclude, press OK. So now after managing my filter, I need to turn on the packet capture, press OK. And I need to go to my Linux client to generate the traffic. So I'm at my Linux client. I'm going to send ping to netsums.com. Two pings, dig, and wget. OK, now I'm going to go back to my firewall. I'm going to refresh the page. And I have again the FW, RX, and TX. But I'm going to do something different now. And I'm going to download my RX and also my TX. And I'm going to open my RX on Wireshark. So this is my RX PCAP. And here I have the IP address from my Linux client and the IP address from netsums.com. Fine. And I have the IP address from netsums.com. But the translated IP address. And here starts the second ping again. So there are some information missing. And for that, you can come to File, Merge, and find your TX PCAP. And if you merge both of them, you have now your original IP, your target, your translated IP, and your target. And then for as an answer, you have the your target, your transla translated IP, and then your target, and then your original IP. So this is one session, these four. 
with all the information that you need. And you have also the other four, it's the second ping. And here you have also for the, my, for the DNS query, the same thing. And it keeps going. And here, starting from this line, you have my wget. So this is how I would suggest you to do. You open your receive file, come merge and merge with your transmit file. And at the file, you enter also at the source, the IP address from your net. So guys, thank you very much for watching the video until the end. I was planning on making a little bit shorter video. In the end, it's above 10 minutes, but it's okay. I hope you got some value from the video. You can hit the like button if you like the video. You can also subscribe to the channel if you want. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.